measurement in physical science brings to mind complex instruments, instruments used with skill to get accurate comparisons. Accuracy is a prime objective in physical science. Whether we're determining the thrust a rocket will develop on a test stand, the quantity of light received from a distant star, or the intensity of radiation released in a nuclear reactor. In measuring any physical quantity, accuracy depends upon the particular instrument and the skill with which an instrument is used. To demonstrate some of the principles involved in making accurate measurements of physical quantities, we'll consider the three basic quantities of physical science. Distance, mass, and time. Let's start with distance. In this acceleration experiment, the boys need to know the distance along this inclined plane. The boys use a rather crude instrument, a cloth measuring tape. No matter how skillfully they use the tape, it will be difficult for them to get an accurate measurement. The tape sags. When they pull it sufficiently tight to make it follow a straight line, the soft material stretches slightly. The crudeness of the instrument limits the accuracy, no matter how skillfully the measurement is made. By substituting a steel measuring tape, the boys can get a more accurate measurement. We can show other ways in which the skills of an observer and the quality of an instrument complement one another. In this experiment, involving intensity of nuclear radiation, a certain degree of skill is required to measure distance, even with a comparatively simple instrument, this meter stick. We'll measure the distance from the probe of the Geiger counter to the piece of metal shielding that has been placed in front of a radioactive source. Notice that the shield is not lined up with the end of the stick. The end is worn, so the first division is short. This source of error is eliminated by measuring between points farther up the scale. Another potential source of error is the thickness of the stick. The scale is separated from the probe so that our reading of the scale changes as we change our angle of view. This source of error is called parallax. It is inherent in the way we see things in perspective. To reduce parallax, a skilled observer will turn the stick, bringing the scale markings closer to the probe. Even now, however, there is a small space between the scale and the rounded end of the probe. If the experiment requires greater accuracy, we can select another instrument more appropriate for the job. A mirror scale. When the observer is in the position where the mirror image is lined up exactly with the end of the probe, his line of vision is perpendicular to the scale, giving a more accurate reading. Our skill in using an instrument depends on knowing which instrument is most appropriate for a given job. For example, Suppose we want to measure the thickness of the metal shield. The metal is so thin, we cannot use the smallest units on the meter stick because we cannot distinguish distances much smaller than a millimeter. So in this case, a more accurate instrument to use is the micrometer caliper. To tell when the caliper is in contact with both sides of the shield, we depend on our sense of touch. We can measure the thickness of the shield to within a hundredth of a millimeter with a micrometer. Have you ever thought of a microscope as a measuring instrument? With a microscope, our sense of sight is extended and we can measure living cells that are only several thousandths of a millimeter in diameter. Again, it is the design and quality of an instrument combined with the skill in using it that results in an accurate measurement of distance. In measuring mass, the same principles apply. 
In this impact experiment, consider the mass of one of the balls. How can we get an accurate determination of its mass? First, we need a set of standard metric masses for comparison. A direct visual comparison of masses is not likely to be very accurate. We could make an indirect comparison with the aid of an instrument such as a spring balance. The balance is calibrated to show weights of the standard masses. Keep in mind that there is a difference between mass and weight. When we weigh an unknown mass, we are comparing the weight of the standard with the weight of the unknown mass. The mass of an object at rest is always the same. The weight is not. Weight depends on gravity. And gravity, of course, depends upon the mass of the Earth and the distance from its center. At the equator, this distance is greater than at the poles due to the Earth's equatorial bulge. So if an object at one of the poles weighs 100 grams, at the equator, the same object will weigh about 99 and a half grams. If an object is sent far enough away from the Earth, it may approach the state called weightlessness, experienced by men in certain kinds of flight. On the moon, an object will weigh less than on the Earth due to the moon's lower gravitational attraction. Since weight depends upon position, if we wish to make an accurate comparison between masses, we should weigh them at the same place. To do this, we select an instrument appropriate for the job, the beam balance. With a beam balance, the standard masses are used in the actual comparison. So the unknown mass is being compared directly with the standard masses. When the masses balance, we know that the quantity of mass on each side is the same. This is the principle of the beam balance. Beam balances, like other measuring instruments, are available with differing degrees of accuracy. This one can measure a mass of 1,000 pounds to within one two thousandth of a pound. The microbalance being used here is accurate to within one millionth of a gram. The quality of the instrument and the skill with which it is used determine the accuracy with which the mass is measured. To show how the principles we have observed apply to the measurement of time, we'll use this stop clock, which can measure to within one hundredth of a second. For our example, we'll consider the vibration of an inertia balance. We'll measure the interval of time it takes for the mass to swing past the vertical rod and then back again. We'll start the clock when the mass is exactly opposite the rod and stop it when it returns. The clock indicates the interval to the nearest hundredth of a second. But is this accurate? Watch as this student resets the clock and measures the interval once again. See if you notice any sources of error. What about the way he looks at the balance? Is parallax a factor here? What about his reaction time between seeing the mass pass in front of the indicator and pressing down on the start button? Aside from the variation between this reading and the last one, our general knowledge tells us that reaction time interferes with the accuracy of the measurement. Realizing the limitations of his senses, a skilled observer may modify his instrument to compensate for this. In this case, by using a photoelectric device. A projector will provide a beam of light which will be received by a photosensitive cell. 
the card will cut through the beam of light. The edge of the card, lined up with the center of the mass, cuts through the beam of light and activates the photocell. The cell automatically starts and then stops the clock to which it is connected. Now the time intervals will be measured with greater accuracy. This is another way of compensating for limitations of our senses. A clock wired to a photocell is just one of many instruments skillful observers have devised for getting accurate measurements of time. To measure intervals between heartbeats, scientists have developed the electrocardiograph. This device compares the time between heartbeats with the time it takes the paper to move past the pen. The oscilloscope is another device used to measure time. The wave pattern shown on this screen indicates the intervals of time between fuel ignition in the cylinders of the engine. Time, remember, is one of the basic quantities of physical science. The principles we have seen for measuring these basic quantities of distance, mass, and time apply equally well to other physical measurements. Whether our measurement problem requires a highly specialized or a routine procedure, the design and quality of our instruments must be appropriate to the job, and we must use them skillfully to get accurate measurements of physical quantities. Thank you.